Greetings, sleepers. Before we begin our descent, as the lights dim and you settle in, please remember that due to adult language and the violent nature of this tale, as well as the very adult themes of cult divinity loss, this story is rated M for mature and we strongly encourage listener discretion. We make full use of consent in gaming and safety tools on this show and hope you do the same. And now, journey with us beyond the city's neon glow, snaking through faded alleys and darkened corridors. Descend past echoing subway platforms and choking steam tunnels. Follow the trails of blood raining down from the streets and apartments above. Crimson rivers perpetually fed by atrocity and sin. Explore the city's darkest labyrinths and ritual chambers where cold concrete meets warm flesh, where shadows dwell and insanity reigns. Gaze shamelessly into this abyssal realm. Freely share your forbidden secrets with strangers. Open your tortured heart and let your sorrows and passions bleed out. Allow them to reshape your mind and body into exquisite horrors. Sink into sublime depravity and soothing pain where dead citadels and forgotten worlds wait beyond a tenuous threshold of darkness and madness. I will be your narrator guiding you through the atrocities that lie just beyond the veil. With me are the victims of Metropolis, here to burn in ecstasy, fall to madness, and be dragged screaming into the inferno. Lost and broken, introduce yourselves and your characters to the audience. Fox on the interwebs. Um, tonight I will be playing Garnet Faust, uh, a, I don't know, rich bitch who uh, flaunts that money around like it's nothing. Good evening. I'm Salubri. Uh, you may find me at Salubri MD, not a medical doctor, uh, on Twitch and on Twitter. Tonight, I'll be playing Marjorie Air, the older rich bitch. Uh. I'm uh, Calvin Khalil. You can find me on Twitter at, at KKhalil. Um, tonight, I'll be playing Amble on Wii. Um, mm, uh, a young man in search of something new. Hello, I am Zachary Naldra. He, him, I am found on various uh, social medias as at Zach Rules. Uh, the ones that I'm not there, if, uh, if you see Zach Ruiz, you can look for trying to Zach Rules Dice. Tonight, I will be playing Tracy T.J. Johnson, also a he, him, who uh, is just at this for the money at this point. Hi, let's try that again. Hi, I'm K. I'm she, they pronouns. You can find me at Critical K with two K's on the bird app. And tonight I will be playing uh, Reese, he, him, uh, a lost young man who's just trying to sort of get by in this cruel world in some semblance of normal. Excellent. Amble. Yes. You step through the portal and sit bolt upright in bed, gasping, covered in sweat. The sheets are soaked. It's not your bed. You don't even remember which Jane or John you went home with that night, but it's a nice bed. It's king. Sheets are silk, which means they're even grosser now that they're soaked in your sweat. It's empty though. The person is not there with you. It's a nice, nice room. It's not, it's not great, but it's nice. It's well appointed. Stuff's real wood. Okay, I um, get out of the bed. You flip the covers out of the way and see that your legs have been amputated from the knees down. Please roll, keep it together. That's uh, cool. Yes. Uh, 11. 
Okay. Uh, pick one condition from among the following. Disassociation, panic, or uh, faint. Um, hmm. All right. I guess disassociation works for me. Go ahead and uh, role play that scene as if as if having a disassociative moment as you like. Nope, that's not me. And analyze this as if you were watching a movie. Um. Hello? Is anybody there? I. I think I must have left my leg. Uh, I, I think I lost something at the party. Hello? There's no verbal answer, but there's a shuffling sound from deeper in the house. The door to the bedroom that leads out into the rest of the house is closed. There's the click of a light, and you see a little bit of light flood from under the crack under the door. It's very yellow light, like the old style cheap light bulbs. And you hear somebody coming down what sounds like a hardwood floor. It is weird because it's three thumps and they're slow and methodical. Like something with three legs is slowly approaching the door. Hitting the ground rather hard, too. Like it's very heavy. Well, I hope that's a bag of cocaine you've got with you. So I can't feel my legs, so maybe that's not a good idea. I like pat down the sheets. I'm sure my legs are right underneath the uh, right underneath where my knees are. Absolutely, can't totally. Um, the thumping stops momentarily, and a deep bass growl is all the answer you get. Like impossibly deep, shakes the floor a little, and then the thump thumping begins again. Um, okay. Uh, look, I, I don't remember what we may have agreed to uh, last night or last morning. Who knows what time it is? Uh, but I think I just need like a little time out for a second. Shit, what was the safe word? You can't remember. Footsteps are still approaching the door. All right, I try to uh, sit up in the bed, and I'll use the sheets to, like, cover up my amputated legs. Mm hmm It stops just outside the door. And the door explodes, like, literally into splinters of wood. Several of them pierce your body in various places, and when one hits your left eye, that's when you sit up in your actual bed in your shitty little apartment. The scream lodged halfway through your throat. See sheets that are not silk soaked in blood. Describe where you live to us when you're not out with a date. Um. Okay, it's like a one-bedroom studio, like the kind of uh, kitchen and bedroom are one same room, and there's like a bathroom with like ha a half sink and a toilet without a door, kind of the end by the, you know, door to the main hallway. It's a five-story walk-up. I've got like kind of a twin mattress on the floor here. There are like several pizza boxes uh, littered about the floor. Uh, there's a flat screen TV on the wall that looks pretty new. Um, yeah, that's, a, that's about it. Okay. Please take minus one stability as you readjust to being in your own room and realizing that was an inception style nightmare apparently marjorie you step through the portal and sit upright gasping in the hotel room that was the town where you're supposed to meet with garnet in two days because it hasn't actually happened yet okay what hotel is it uh, it's going to be a Ritz Carlton. Nice. Uh, penthouse? It, sorry? Penthouse? Yeah, penthouse. Mm. She, uh, she sits up in bed and she kind of runs her hands through, through her hair 
and she like drags her hands down her face and she checks what time it is. Three, 13 a.m. Okay. Um, she'll like, after she's done that, she'll look over to her phone to check and see if locations have been turned on while she was asleep. Uh, hundreds of text messages have come in. Okay. Uh, she'll reach for her inhaler, give it a shake, and and she'll start going through her phone. Okay, I'm going to need you to roll endure injury. Okay. As you blast aerosolized bleach into your lungs from your inhaler. Oh, shit. All right. Well, that sucks. Um... <laughs> Damn, Garnet really Garnet really knows how to party. All right. Uh nine. Okay. Excellent. For me. Uh you take uh two wounds. Okay. Which uh, translates to one major wound. Serious. Sorry. One serious wound. Okay. Mark your sheet thusly. So one major. As you okay. gasp for air and cough out blood and fluid, your phone falls on the floor. Location is on. You've been here all night. Okay. Uh, she'll get out of bed to pick up her phone. Gasping for air. Mm -hmm. Uh. Uh, the text messages all say I know where you are and I never forgot what you did who does Marjorie automatically assume this weird stalker is uh, her husband what does he think you did um he tried to stop her from um, getting her business off the ground and she did some terrible things to get him 51 50 And then she continued to do her terrible things to get her business off the ground. Um, what do you do? Uh, when was the last text sent? Three minutes ago. There are 666 texts. All right. Um, at that point, Marjorie just kind of laughs and she says, oh, you always had a sense of humor. Uh, and she'll turn on the lights um, and she'll reach for her taser. Okay. And she'll check to see if uh, the phone line in her hotel has been cut or not to call, to call front desk. You pick up the phone to call the front desk? Mm-hmm. Just hissing static. Not the sound of a cut line. Okay. What do I think it is? Roll investigate. Well, I'm going to have to put these um, dice in the freezer tonight. Uh, another nine. Okay. Uh, bad connection? Sure, that's got to be it, right? Uh, if you open up your uh, quick reference guide for cult, if you still have it from two weeks ago, the player moves guide, it will tell us what you get on a nine. You don't completely get nothing. You may get some information anyway, but you pay a price for it. You may expose yourself to dangers or costs. The GM makes a move. Which means you can still ask me one question from that list. Is there anything weird about what I'm investigating? Yes, you have no memory of ever getting a room at this hotel in this town. All right. Or coming here. Not just because of the portal, but like before that. You're pretty sure you were actually staying at that Hyatt Regency. Okay. 
Well, that's just fucking impossible because the higher regency is so gauche. <laughs> uh, that's why you remember you're really mad about it because whoever set that up for you is getting fucking fired. Mm hmm. All right, so I'm going to turn on the lights. That's when this. That's when the static stops. Okay. And a very quiet, ominous female voice says, Dark days are coming for you, Marjorie. Um, Marjorie just kind of like, ugh, and like, and says, um, tell them to call me back later. I'm a little busy. You can trust the death magician and the bringer of violence. And the one who does not understand themselves. But you cannot trust. And then the line goes dead. Okay. okay. Hello? Where's your manager? A high-pitched shriek that's so loud it actually bursts a couple of light bulbs in your room. Comes out of the... Right next to your ear. Okay. Marjorie kind of, like, slams the phone back on the cradle. And she'll, like, sit down. Uh, and, like her ears um, and she's checking her phone to see if another text message comes in. Yes, there's a 667th text. Okay. This is the way you die, Marjorie, silent, alone, in endless oblivion. Then you sit up gasping in your actual bed. Okay. At your house, which you could describe to us. All right. Um, it is big and spacious and oh, so cold. It's real. It's it's very it might be very similar to the house that Amber woke up in. It's all real wood with gold finishing. Uh, and there's some very fancy art on the walls. Uh, but everything that Marjorie needs is right next to her California King bed. Uh, it's a stack of reports for the quarter, um, her inhaler, a phone, a taser, and a photo, a picture frame that has been turned face down. Okay. You remember your home. This is one of your homes because uh, you had a flurry of meetings across Western Europe before your actual meeting with Garnet, who you had some really weird dreams about tonight. That's strange. You remember everything, though. Never. What do you do with your day? What is today's agenda? Let's just say you're in Spain for the hell of it. This is your, this is your uh, uh, vacation house in Spain. Okay. Um, today's agenda is going to be a Zoom call with Siegfried uh, about uh, about the meeting that I had with Garnet to go over the contracts, if those even got signed, and if we have them. That meeting doesn't happen until later in the week. Okay, all right. This could be the same thing, but a pre-meeting. Perfect. All right, so yeah, so I'm meeting with him to go over all the paperwork to make sure that our contract is uh, what it needs to be. Uh, and then I'm going to go on a wine tasting uh, through the countryside and visit one of my corporate offices. Okay. The Zoom call doesn't happen on the schedule you thought it would. It got to reschedule until right in the middle of the wine tasting. All right. Fuck, fuck it. Why would you not go to the wine tasting? You do what you want. Yeah, exactly. So the dear day goes smoothly and uneventfully until the Zoom call starts ringing your phone with that that noise everyone who uses Zoom for meetings learns to hate. <laughs> Not as bad as Teams, but close. <laughs> I give my wine glass to a like to a like young Spaniard boy, and I like pat him on the cheek and I tell him to um, go and get me some more of that while I take my call. Which cheek? The, the, the cheek cheek. <laughs> Garnet's married. She's faithful. You mean, you mean Marjorie? Sorry, Marjorie. <laughs> wow. 
Yeah, Marjorie is faithful. So she she pats him on the on the face cheeks. Faithful to a man she fifty one fifteen. Lord, I thought I was messed up. If you want to cook an omelet? If you want to cook an omelet, got fifty one fifty a few husbands. Right. Um. Looking at you now, Tyler. I was actually looking at Moon when you said that. But anyways, the Zoom <laughs> call opens. <clears throat> but it's not your business partner. Okay. The person that answers the call is a lady. Uh, fit, athletic, wearing a very expensive, very tailored suit. Blonde hair, shoulder length, cut in a bob. Uh, dark blue eyes, intense makeup. You don't recognize her. She smiles at you. Marjorie. Is Siegfried tied up at the moment? She giggles. That's a funny way to phrase it. But yes. Yes, he is. And who are you? I'm Sin. Pleased to meet you. If you glance at the Zoom call, it says C-Y-N. Not S-I-N. <laughs> All right. Very cool. All right. And who gave you the clearance to stand in for my accountant? No one. I, I work for Baus Industries, though. Go on. That dream you had last night, that we all had. We need to talk about it, and not next week. We need to move your appointment with Garnet forward to, shall we say, tonight. Um... Marjorie opens up like another phone where she keeps all of her like she has two she has two phones this one's like her burner and then she's mm -hmm. got another phone with all of her actual like appointments and meetings and all that uh and she says um I can be in Los Angeles in six hours I think we can do better than that you hear the noise of a helicopter landing somewhere on the grounds of the wine garden We'll see you in four. The Zoom call ends. I tell the boy to bring me to pack. I tell that I tell that boy to bring me the bottle instead. <laughs> Amble, tell us about your day. Um. Well, I wake up and I, uh, you know, splash some water on my face and you know walk around my apartment in my underwear and like check the pizza boxes for some pizza um how rotted is too rotted what leftover pizza well if there is any well there is in several of the boxes but how rotted is too rotted because you know uh, if you leave pizza out for even an hour it starts to rot that's what makes leftover pizza taste so good yeah i never really thought about it um, so you just ruined leftover pizza for me. Only if it's left on the counter in the refrigerator. It's not the same. Uh, yeah, I mean, my fridge probably, you know, it doesn't really work. You know, electricity is kind of intermittent in this place. So I uh, text while I chew on some pizza without really looking at it. You're pretty sure this is the one from yesterday. <laughs> um, I'll text my... Uh, my manager and my uh, dealer, uh, basically about the same thing. Uh, and then I'll play, um, you know, some mobile games waiting on them to get back to me. Okay. Uh, assuming they answer and have what you're looking for, what do you do next with your day? We'll assume for the sake of the scene that they have what you're after, and you have the money to pay the dealer. Um, okay, sure, we can make that assumption. Uh, so uh, I, I would wait for them to drop it off, I guess. You make them come to you. Okay. Well, I mean, it is their job. Uh, your dealer tells you that you would need to come pick it up from him today. He's not leaving his house. Oh, that's he where tells that you he's been exposed, which is code for the cops are watching him again. 
Okay. Well, that works because then I can, you know, maybe see his wife while I'm there. Okay. Uh, you head to his house and have a better than average afternoon. What that means will leave to everyone's imagination, but Amble knows. The wife sees you off, all smiles when you're done. Okay. Well, that's that was that was easy. What happens next? You're high as fuck now, but what do you do with your afternoon? Well, we're in Los Angeles, right? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I guess I'll wander along the beach. Okay, uppers or downers? What? Uppers or downers? Uppers. So you're going to wander along the beach high on speed? Well, cocaine, but yes. Glorious. Okay. After what you think is like a mile, but really it's been like three because you're high as fuck. Uh, another guy who kind of looks as strung out as you shows up coming towards you from the other direction. He's pretty cute. He's got short cut, slick back, black hair. Got that leather pants goth look going on. No shirt. Everything's pierced. Everything's tattooed. It's alabaster skin. Well muscled. He's clearly there for you because he's looking you right in the eyes and smiling. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty used to that look. Mm hmm What do you do? Avoid him. Ignore him. Walk right up to him. Uh, I mean, I guess I'll gauge his level of interest. I'll, I'll like, you know, I'll, I'll lean against the wall and just look mm -hmm. back at him. He ambles over. That's my name. I know. Leans up against the wall across from you. Gives you a smile as charming as yours. says, hey, Amble. And out of character, all those powers you have on other people, he has, and they're affecting you. So in character, this is a strange sensation. It's like you're feeling the thing you see in other people's eyes when they look at you. All right, I, I, you know, look back at him and I say, hey there, guy. Sid, you can call me Sid. Okay, Sid. Nice day for a walk. I mean, yeah. Uh, he looks around, there's nobody in this part of the beach. There's a little one of those little wooden picnic tables in the under the overhang of the building you're leaning against, which is probably like a concession area or a bathroom, who knows. <sighs> and he says, Why not take a break in the shade for a minute? Plops down, pulls out a piece of foil, opens it and starts uh, setting up a line. Um, is he actually in any shade? <laughs> yeah, so like imagine those beach things where the bathroom's a big brick building and then they've got like the little it's usually made out of canvas overhang on the poles and there's like three picnic tables underneath of it. And they're like really old and full of splinters. That's what it is. All right, I plop down next to him. He pushes the line over to you. How you been sleeping? Um unusually. And he makes his own line, snorts it. Unusually by myself. You? It's unfortunate. Rarely by myself. All right, I snorted. I don't like it when I have to. I snorted. Uh, I snorted of the uh, one of the offered lines. Um. Well, you know. Would you like to sleep somewhere not by yourself tonight, where you don't have to do a thing to earn it, except show up and listen. 
Listen to what? What my boss has to say. Is your boss, I don't know, a weird, like, priest guy in a robe or some shit? Because usually... Uh, guy, no. Those other words, not in that order, but yes. All right, well, the last time I went to a party like that, I was the only one who, uh, you know, left the building in one piece. So as long as your boss is cool with that outcome, then, you know, sounds fine to me. No, we don't want to sacrifice you. I just want to talk about that dream you had last night. Oh. He reaches inside his little leather jacket, which you don't know where how he can fit anything in there. <laughs> Pulls out an envelope and slides it towards you. You get to keep this even if you don't show up, but we think you should. All right, I checked the inside of the envelope. $25,000 in cash, $100 bills unmarked. Okay, and what, what's, is this like half? I mean, what's the other part of the deal? What do I get if I show up? I mean, this is plenty of money just for me to walk. Yes, it is. What do you get if you show up? I don't know. What do you want, Amble? Oh, I guess, I don't know, answers or something. No, no, think bigger. What do you want with your life? Well, gee, guy, I don't know if I know you well enough to get that into that. I thought we were just going to fuck or something. No fucking will be required. Just listening. As oh. far as what you'll get in return, whatever you ask for, I imagine. Okay, sure, why not? Where am I headed? Good. We'll send a car around to your place at 8. Okay. I, um... Cat. I, um... I just kind of, like, finger flick one of his piercings. I assume on his nipple. And as I get up, see you at 8. Okay. I liked it better when I had to rescue him from a yacht. <laughs> I suck uh, at this. He smiles at you. It's a knowing smile. Grabs your hand as you're flicking it. Which forces you to yank on the piercing. Winks at you and wanders off around the corner. A few seconds later, you are a motorcycle start up and take off. Okay, I, I pocket the envelope in my um, coat, I guess. Sorry, that's the cat. My windbreaker. And uh, continue on my walk down the beach. Eight o'clock rolls around. Are you back at your house and waiting outside for someone to show up? No, with $25,000, I'm back at my drug dealer's place, probably. <laughs> <laughs> at eight o'clock, high as fuck, listening to your drug dealer and his wife shout, what about... Only Amble knows it's no one else's business. Uh, when headlights go through the window the way they do when someone pulls in and turns sideways and an engine revs real loud, you get a text. Okay, I'm going to go to that cult party, guys. And I, I walk out. <laughs> no answer. Okay. It is a stretch SUV limousine. This is Faust Industries on the side. Oh, shit, that sounds really fucking familiar. Where have I heard that before? It's the largest financial corporation on the planet. Yeah, doesn't ring a bell. All right, I get inside. You get inside. Marjorie and Amble. You arrive late to the party. Marjorie, why were you late? Because their driver was late. Also, Their driver is never late. Also, I probably made the driver take a few extra turns. There it is. Okay. <laughs> I made them take a few extra turns. Ample, why was your car late? Like, the car was on time for you, but why were you late to arrive? 
Oh, the driver probably caught a glimpse of me in the mirror and like spent <laughs> way too much time not looking at the road. Okay. You both arrive roughly the same time in matching SUVs in front of a palatial estate near the city, but at, you know, several miles outside of it on a bluff. I call it a palatial estate. It's a castle mansion. It's like a James Bond supervillain lair. There's already several other SUVs in the roundabout. You can't forget the statue and the fountain. Why don't you describe that to them? No. That's your job. <laughs> uh, so, for Marjorie, it is a statue of Garnet. Like... Well, uh... No, it's not. Are you sure? Yes. Oh. What is it you think it's a statue of? Persephone and Hades. Mm-hmm. The baby To Taurus. Marjorie, it's a statue of what you assume must be Garnet. Side by side with a Greek figure. Okay. Um, Marjorie just like gives it a look and she's like, wow, the rich will do just anything these days. Solid, solid marble. Uh, very well sculptured uh, in the classic Greek style with, you know, it's built that way. It's got the little cracks in it even. The amble, yeah, it's Persephone's and Hades. Persephone and Hades. You see a little bit of the guy who played Hades from Wrath of the Titans in it, but that might be just you, Amble. Uh, unlike most of the statues that are similar, though, it's not Persephone, you know, in the romance novel pose, looking up at Hades with her hand suggestively close to his crotch while he lords over the world. They're equals here. And if anything, he's actually a little shorter than her. <clears throat> And she's the one imperiously looking out away from the house while he looks back towards the house. I'm not really sure what that means, either of you. All right. The fountain itself is one of those super fancy ones where the water creates actual solid patterns and it's got all kinds of lights in it. Uh, as you walk past Marjorie, you've dismissed it and you're rolling your eyes, but Amber, you notice that uh, as you come around the statue, there's like a little puppy Cerberus there. That's funny. Makes you giggle a little. Uh, you head towards the house. You can hear voices talking. Uh, servants or maybe security, maybe both, let you in. You head into a very palatial dining room that has a full spread of, what was the name of the restaurant again, TJ? Tacos? Uh, mo mo holy moly tacos or something. Was it holy moly? Taco, yeah, something something moly. Taco mole. Taco mole. It's like a in your world a super popular chain, but not like Taco Bell style chain. It's actual, more like Chili's. <laughs> and it's like everything that would be on that menu is here on display. Like they had it catered, thousands of dollars worth. TJ, describe yourself. Just how your character looks. Um, he, he's a dirty biker, uh, dirty jeans, not like worn or torn or at all, but they're just, you know, dirty because just the streets from Los Angeles and riding around, you, you get dirty, uh, biker boots, bike gloves, vest with no, uh, colors on it bandana he's got a face that looks like he's been punched in it a couple of times over the course of his life broken nose once or twice and he's currently eating a taco delicious Reese, describe your character yeah, so you see a young man, uh, a little on the shorter side. Uh, he is very handsome. He's in a dark sort of sweater that sort of clings to his skin, which is pale. He's got red hair with like a white blonde wisps in it that uh, 
cover his eyes, but uh, if you were to look, they'd, they'd be a little uh, tired, but also enchanting in a sense, entrancing, like you couldn't look away, even if you wanted to. His face is very young. Uh, his body's lean, uh, but weak. And you get the sense that maybe um, in a few years, he'll, he'll grow into it a little bit more. There, but there's there's something intrinsically there. And uh, I have a question because I don't know how this works with PCs, Tyler. Uh, when I meet one or new people, I'm supposed to roll object of desire, or does that not happen to PCs? That doesn't happen to PCs. Correct. Okay, cool, thank you. So yeah, just a very uh, attractive young man who looks a little frightened. He's sort of um, a little little hunched in on himself. He's standing at the table. Uh, like he, he hasn't allowed himself to sit and he's sort of near where, where Garnet is sitting. Um, and he looks a little, a little, little panicked on his youthful features. And then, uh, where did I put it? Woman with blue hair. Right here for, uh, Amble and Marjorie. This person is also in the room. I put it in the Discord. And of course, Garnet doesn't need a description because you're looking at Garnet. Uh, Garnet looks exactly like that. Garnet is... Everything about the proportions is perfect, as if designed that way. Hmm. You both remember from your dreams all of these people except Reese. And then you remember you recognize Reese, too. Remember that first person, that other random bystander who screamed like they could see the monster and was instantly super killed? Be Reese. Sin and Sid are also there flanking Garnet along with several other staff members. You walk in in time to overhear uh, this other person in the picture I just sent you freaking out as they look at their phone and realize that the pillar the, that the how much was that house it was like two point something million several million dollar home had just been given to them by garnet apparently because they asked and tj while eating the taco smiling to himself over whatever oh, something it was 1.599 my apologies <laughs> <clears throat> reese has a stunned look on their face closing a phone like a phone call just ended you missed uh which doesn't really mean anything to marjorie but to amble it clearly seems like these three were given the thing promised to you like literally whatever they asked for uh and you catch the tail end of a conversation about how garnet wants all of them all of you uh, to work together long enough to figure out why you all shared this dream and what the hell is going on. There was a brief discussion about a power substation, or at least a place that used to be a power substation on the outskirts of town and how it's a nexus point between realities, which probably makes you both roll your eyes, but I don't know, it's up to you. Uh, and this house is weird. Like, if you look closely, the artwork is all occult. The trinkets are all occult. It's even got strangely shaped rooms. Like, they're not square. Uh, and there's a vibe in here. Whether or not you believe in that, you can feel it. An energy. Like it's a nexus. Um, as Garnet finishes her speech, her eyes land on the two of you, but before she can say anything... Another person that none of you had noticed was there speaks up. And for Marjorie and Amble, it's a woman. About as tall as Amble. With hair, banta black, like midnight. Like a starless sky, down to the middle of her back. <laughs> Eyes, the most intense you've ever seen. Uh, See. What was that, Reese? Uh, oh, Percy. And uh, 
Reese says, oh, Percy, as if Reese knows who this person is. And she steps forward and says, I have something to say about that in response to the last thing Garnet was saying. Good luck remembering what that was, because I don't. Oh, I don't remember inviting you. You didn't. I invited myself. I visited most of you today. Apologies to those I didn't have time to meet. Looks at Marjorie and Amble. Well, is it time to make introductions now? Uh, see through the illusion, Mr. Chief. <laughs> Roll it. Uh... Sixteen success. Roll, keep it together. <laughs> this is the thing. We'll say, uh, Reese will take a couple steps closer. Uh, 20 for my keep it together. Okay, please remove one stability, Garnet. Fuck! <laughs> uh, you look at her, and the hair black as midnight remains, but it gets deeper and richer, like it's flowing out from her head to the walls dissolve in your house. And, the, and there's a sense of vertigo as you realize the angle is changing and you are looking up and the hair is the night sky. It slowly begins to fill with stars. As if she is the night sky. And you can smell spring. Flowers blooming, grass beginning to grow. Ground is finally unfrozen, has begun to thaw. Renewal, new life. Death being reversed. I don't know how that makes a Garnet feel considering Garnet, but the strange thing is the vibe coming off of the starless sky is endless, eternal death. But not like sickness and disease, but like the end of everything. Oblivion. The big empty. Not like she is it, but like she comes from it. But she brings renewal where she goes, and not just of things, of people too. Uh, and her eyes pull you in and you realize that those eyes are ancient impossibly ancient the skin is not the body is young fresh new reborn and she smiles at you and for some reason you can't stop thinking about your statue outside your fountain me? Mm -hmm. oh And you feel a level of power coming off of her you've never experienced before, even in the house. A godlike level of power. You are the last. I don't know if person is the right word for you. Uh. What do you need? It's not what I need, it's what you need. Do you have the answers for what I am seeking? I have more answers than you do, but not all of them. You've dreamed of my home. Metropolis? No. Oh. The restaurant? The toy comes from my home. I have not seen that in so very long. The spinning top? Yes. The one I need to free Reese from his... owners? That's correct. She glides across the room, runs her fingers along Reese's face. Reese experiences the thing that Reese normally causes other people. The poor child. Hi, Miss Percy. It's, it's nice to see you again. She smiles at you. Do you prefer to be called Percy rather than your other name? I've been called a lot of things by a lot of people. Whatever makes you comfortable. 
I mean, it should be what makes you comfortable. What do you prefer to be called? Queen. Looks you in the eye, clearly relaying, you know. Well, you're not my queen, but you are a queen, so I will address you as such. Marjorie have something to say, or Marjorie just shaking her head? No, Marjorie is just like obvious confusion. Anyone else is free to butt in here. Oh yeah, I just talk to talk, so anyone's free to <laughs> butt in. I. <laughs> um, I guess uh, Salubri's a little confused as to so we just came in at the tail end of this. Of the last Gar session, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so Garnet was asking, uh, Garnet wants to pull us together to figure out why we're all having this, why we all have this dream, and so that's, so we're basically, we basically missed all of that at this point, or did we? Correct. Yeah. Oh. You missed a full session of everyone explaining their day, being approached by Percy, and then being approached by Garnet's people, and then they had a fancy dinner party. Okay. And they so all had their own nightmare scene, just like you did too waking from the nightmare and then uh they were all offered whatever they wanted to agree to join the team which is what's about to happen to you okay uh and so does marjorie recognize percy's voice as the woman that she would that could that when she tried to call the front desk yes okay <clears throat> right, good catch so, okay so then marjorie goes have we met before we met no spoke on the phone briefly yes how did you get in there into your dreams yes let's start Quite there easily would you like me to teach you she could probably teach you a lot of things marjorie if you wanted to at what cost you would see the truth of things. And maybe go mad. So, maybe. seeing seeing through the lie costs you everything, child. Well, I've already paid a very steep price to be where I stand now. What's one, what's one more bill to pick up? She glances over her shoulder at Garnet and winks. I guess you don't have to bribe this one. I've done it inadvertently. Oh, thank you. What about you? Looks at Amble and steps out of the way so Amble can see Garnet. That's just a, an, as a note. Anybody who was uh, close enough to TJ when uh, Marjorie mentioned uh, this woman being in her dreams, uh, who is familiar enough with 80s rock will uh, hair or hair metal, will notice TJ is humming Dokken. Oh, Amble. So I know you've already met Sid. References the person on her right. Uh, Rubs his nipple piercing. Don't make it weird. She flicks it. Um, <laughs> oh, I think it'd be very weird with him. Uh, honey. Um, so you've already been given something. Money, I'm assuming. Is there anything else you desire? A place to stay permanently? Uh, uh, a stable position at a club? Anything. Um, well, it seems like you have some very uh, um, <clears throat> powerful friends. I kind of side-eye the queen. I mean, her and I could be friends, but I met her mere seconds ago, just like everybody else. She glides across the room rapidly. And it's in your ear, Amble. Cinnamon and honey. Its breath tickles. I could be your friend, too. Instant physical reaction. Carry on. Um... Okay, that sounds fine with me. 
Um, but as far as what I want, I mean, what do you have to offer? I mean, TJ got a double payment. Uh, Reese here, I am bargaining on his behalf for his bodily autonomy. Um, oh, I can't remember Great Cthulhu's character name. What was their character? Annalise. Annalise, I just bought them a home so that they have a permanent place to stay. Oh, as well as um, their prescriptions paid forever. Um, none of that silly American healthcare. She also had this skinhead I have beef with knocked off. Oh, yeah. Uh, TJ was having problems with a particular uh, individual, and I had that taken care of. Okay, I, I guess... Um... Well, I always felt that, you know, I was de destined for something greater than this. So perhaps that's something you can help me with. Sure. I will help you fulfill your full potential. My destiny. Your destiny. Oh, um, uh, she like snaps her fingers to, um, Donovan. I think is who I named the other guy. It was Sheila and yes. Donovan. <laughs> she snaps yes. her fingers to Donovan, and it's all the signed paperwork for the building that Marjorie wanted to purchase, all signed and finished. She's like, oh, here, you go. There's no reason for us to meet. I already know how that ends up in our dream. Marjorie, like, takes the paperwork very um, warily, and she says, that was a dream, too. Yes, that was our collective dream together. The second dream that we all woke up with, with various things that happened, uh, were not connected. Um, but the one at the restaurant was one that we all shared. I'm assuming that's why you're here. She uh, looks at the queen. Out of character for Sarah, uh, yeah. Everybody had the shared dream of right up to stepping through the portal yeah, and then no, the secondary yeah. dream was everyone well, else. yeah sarah knew that marjorie uh marjorie was was yeah tj has yeah. switched from uh humming in my dreams to dream warriors <laughs> holy shit um <laughs> i'm here because your dream your your collective dream screamed not cried screamed out to me in the night and i heard I was having such a lovely time at a concert, too. This is a death metal band that no one recognizes except maybe Amble and probably TJ, like one of those really underground, really good ones. It would be great if they could get a producer, but nobody produces that kind of music in big time. Uh, I heard it echoing through the realm of dreams, and it called out to me, and I just know it's connected to me and why I'm suddenly free. Who woke you up? Oh, that's quite the story. Looks at Sin. I believe she is friends with some of them. I have heard. But we kind of lose track of them right before you wake up, so I'm kind of curious to know what exactly they did to accomplish such a feat. One of them reminded me who I was. I was lost to myself after so long in that place. Which place? A place between places. I don't know what you would call it. But not home. It was not home. It was a nexus between Tartarus and the Endless City, which should not exist. They should not be connected. Hmm. Interesting. So what can we do for you, Queen? Find my toy. TJ, you seemed to know the individuals you were meeting at the restaurant with. Do you know them now, or do you think you're going to meet them in the next couple of days? 
You do not know them now. But you good. know of them. You don't personally know them. You know who that particular mobster is. Everyone does. That's in your line of work. I, I get hired by, by different organizations from time to time. Uh, I have been hired by that organization, but not directly working with that individual. Perhaps we could use your connections to figure out where he is and pay him an early visit. Totally possible. Uh, duh. So I don't the bike? Feel like fighting an automaton in a restaurant. So the bikers or the dock workers? The dock workers. The dock workers are the ones who have the top. If the dream is accurate, yes. <laughs> Which is all you have to go on, so you should assume it is. I, I usually pick up pick up work from them, uh, meet, meeting up at the Long Beach Terminal. And to clarify for the GM, what did Amber want his payment again to join this little ragtag Scooby Doo group? I don't think he said yet. Uh, uh Garnet agreed to help me oh. fulfill destiny. To help him fulfill his destiny to become something greater. And at this your point, hand up, Reese. At oh, this point, now um, that we've caught up, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Reese. Uh, I just wanted to ask uh, Miss Percy because she said uh, to ask Miss Garnet to call her Queen if she wanted me to call her Miss Percy or a uh, Queen. You've chosen to call me Miss Percy, so that's, that's who I am to you, Reese. That's what matters. Uh, should, wait. You won't matter more? Reality is what you make it. Uh, Mr. So I can call you anything? Yes. All right, boss bitch. I only take slight offense because I should be <laughs> boss bitch, but I'll let it slide. So would I, like, would she be, like, Queen Persephone of, like, of the underworld? That is what Garnet would believe 100%, yes. Okay. Out of character you realize that there are many entities that are godlike in power that fit the paradigm of certain things from history, but it's a lot about what you believe well, no. and you would know that. Just like Underworld is like, is Underworld something I know of as like one of the different realities that exist? The Underworld is the reality you are most familiar with as a death magician. Okay. But is that the, is that the reality I would associate her with? Yes. Okay. In your mind, they must be the same. The Greek, whatever the Greeks believed in, must be this. Okay. Also, uh, what does your um, husband if, think? If... I have not seen him in so long. A silver tear comes out of her eye, and I mean, it's like silver mercury. Uh, Garnet like wipes the tear away? I might regret this later, but she wipes the tear away. With a bare hand? Yep. I oh, said I DJ. might regret it later. I'm gonna DJ need you to roll endure back. injury. Marjorie, by the way, you don't have any physical wounds, but you lose one stability from your nightmare. Reese, what were you gonna say? Um, He was going to say, so if Miss Percy wants the top, does that mean uh, we won't be able... I mean, It's it's okay if you can't. Uh, Miss Percy wants it, so that should come first, but... Uh, uh, are we not making the, the deal for me anymore? What I, what I... It depends on if... Um, hold on. Let me resolve this fucking failure that I just rolled before I tried talking. Oh. I rolled a one and a four, so I got a big old five, boss. Okay. Savannah. What? Yeah. This is Even why you love me. Mercury knows that touching Mercury is a bad idea. Well... It was a woman in pain, and a woman that is as close as Garnet gets to worshipping anybody. So, <laughs> uh, Mark one serious wound, but put it in stabilized. Okay. So, put mercury poisoning and then check stabilized in that area. Mercury poisoning. Holy. Stabilized means you're not taking the penalty for the wound, but if you take any other penalty, you immediately take the new penalty, plus the other wound stops being stabilized for the other players. Cool. Fine. <coughs> uh, she, like, uh, Garnet, as she finishes the motion, like, 
cringes but doesn't say anything and then looks over at Reese. Um, it will depend on if Queen Persephone needs the top to make it back home or not. The uh, mercury disappears through your pores and into your skin. It burns like ice going down your fingers and into your wrist and up the tendons and approaching your elbow. By the time it hits your shoulder, it's faded and it's just a weird pressure as it makes its way to your heart, which skips a beat when it hits it. You feel nothing related to the sensation after that. However, when it does hit your heart, uh, you regain your lost ability. And for the next 24 hours, any or ritual magic you cast is plus one to the result of the roll. Um, Percy looks at Reese and says, it's the same. What you want, what I want, they will all be resolved together. Our fates are intertwined now. Okay, that, that's, uh, that's really nice. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, TJ was going to say something during all of that, too. No, he, he was just kind of like leaning back like, that's not fucking normal. People don't cry silver stuff. Um, no, it's not. At this point, anyone who has any advantages or disadvantages that must be rolled per session, not per story, should roll them now and DM me the results privately. If it's per session, or if it's per story, what you already rolled carried over. For Amble and Marjorie, since you weren't here last week, if you have per story advantages or disadvantages, roll them now and DM me results. Give me those juicy holds. Um, uh, okay. Tyler, I'm leaving erotic up to you and your discretion. And then uh, how do we want to handle artifact given our fun situation? Say that again. Uh, how would you like us to handle the role uh, with artifact given our fun use of the word artifact here? Oh, just roll it so I know the number of holds is all that matters, not the mechanical okay. effect, just how many holds the GM gets is what matters. Okay. All right. To confirm where it says at first game session, that doesn't apply That's here because we rolled it Correct. Last time. That would have been last week, what you already sent me. Yeah. Most of them are like that, but some are weekly or per session. <laughs> Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Anyways. What? Tree rolled poorly. Carry on. Yeah, uh, I mean, I rolled like I'm okay. I'm so, the dumbass who took two advantages where I have to roll at the start of each session. Okay, well, just don't roll along with Kay because Kay will curse you. I have hey, that's not proof. my fault. Yes, it is. Mm. It's all your fault. How do, you, how, how do you know it wasn't you? How do you know you didn't curse me? We don't uh, know this. You rolled uh, first. And then how I do rolled. we want? <laughs> how do we want to clarify my artifact being active, Tyler? I know what that means. I'm not telling you though. <laughs> okay, so I don't so should I not roll for it then? Or should I roll for it? You should roll Does for it, happen? but I know okay. I, I I know what I'm gonna do with that. Uh, I'm gonna surprise okay. you. You're cool, you're cool. I don't like surprise. That's good. K like surprise pain in horror games. I do. <laughs> I mean I just gave myself mercury poisoning, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You've had enough surprises today. I mean, I kinda figured that would happen, but Garnet would do it anyway, so because no, she has no fear of pain or death. So, uh, when you allow the talisman to guide you. Okay, the talisman has not guided me. So, let's look at disadvantages. I th think mine are just, like, at the start of a story. I don't think they're per session. I think yours are story-based, too. I just want to make sure. Also... Also, one of the side DMs reminds me, some of you who have, whenever you meet a new person, if a new NPC enters play, you can just roll those and DM me. You don't have to wait for me to ask. Those of you that have those. And I only care about that for either a scene full of NPCs or a new major NPC. So, like, you know, if you walk into a store, you don't have to roll for the shopkeeper. But if I tell you the gangster and his six mooks, that matters. <laughs> um... Do we want to count having met Persephone already for my role? Or yes. should I do it now? Okay. Plus, Persephone is immune to all of your powers. Yeah, you're all good. 
Yeah, yeah by the way, um, when like the name Persephone got dropped, um, Marjorie does like a double take. Uh, would sorry. She, she she does a double take, but she uh you know, she rolls with it. Uh, would meeting Persephone be considered being confronted by the supernatural? Yes. Cool. Okay, I get to roll that again. <laughs> um. Would uh, the actions at the end of last session mean that I no longer have to roll Nemesis? Fuck a duck. Uh, no. Because your real Nemesis wasn't the Mook, it was the guy that owns the Mook. Don't worry. Don't get to kill them, though. Okay. Just not, just not yet. I yeah, mean, much like Reese... They uh, were Nazis, you, so I feel Nazis. Yeah. Much like Reese, you're climbing the ladder to your actual disadvantage or Dark Seeker, but haven't gotten there yet. I am not distracted or weakened at the moment. Or would you consider it weakened since I took a, a health penalty? No. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, and I have not let my guard down, so okay, that's the only one I rolled for you. I'm still convinced that Kay is cursing me, so I didn't <laughs> even. <laughs> I just like to see you flustered because it's entertaining. <laughs> okay, Percy says. Well, I'll be in touch. Marjorie. I believe you need to know how to get a hold of me because we have a special deal. She walks up to you. Brings uh, her hands within a centimeter of the sides of your face and says, may I? Um, Marjorie like puts her hair up in like a sloppy bun really quick and says, um, you may proceed. Gently touches the side of your face, grabs it, yanks it towards you, and it's the most intense kiss you've ever had in your entire life. No kiss will ever equate to it again. I'm jealous. Nice. Man, woman, or other, doesn't matter. Nothing will ever, never be good enough. Okay. I'm jealous. When, when, uh, when Cora pulls herself away, Marjorie just goes, I haven't had that much fun since I was a kid. <laughs> uh, she kind of smirks at you and says now we can always communicate when necessary you remember what bible study was like right Marjorie and she's whispering in your ear now only you can hear her mm -hmm. I, ch I chose because I, that's what my therapist is for to help me forget those things that's how you communicate with me now Pray to me, I will hear you. Are you there, God? It's me, Marjorie. All right. Because, um, well, thank you and be safe. And then you all blink, and she's just not there anymore. You didn't actually see her leave. So, uh, would either of um, you can go on Reese? It's okay. Uh, I was just gonna say, do either I can make a plate of tacos up for either of you if you'd like? Um, I can I can help myself. Um, Marjorie like takes a hit of her inhaler, uh, and you know she'll like I don't know like kind of like. She hasn't really, like, eaten this kind of food since her, like, college days. So she, like, decides on, like, uh, she decides on, like, some, like, beans and, like, yeah. These are fish tacos. Shrimp tacos. Like, fancy, fancy seafood tacos. Marjorie, what's your favorite meal? Not fancy, but... Um, shit, what is her favorite meal? Um... Top bunting? Oysters and uh, a line of cocaine. 
Thin comes out with a covered platter with the traditional s silver, you know, like, you know this is a joke, like what you rich person would have covering the plate, yeah. smiles and hands it to you. This is the girl from the Zoom meeting. Yeah. Uh, she says, I was disappointed that you weren't on the helipad, and Marjorie will, like, take the platter off. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Marjorie. What could I get on that would remove your disappointment? You can get on the case of finding out where we have to find this gentleman to acquire this top. Uh, she smirks at you. We just need TJ to give us a name. Marjorie looks to TJ. Stinky Pete is the guy I did go through. Uh, give me an investigate roll, TJ. This is what happens when we let TJ name NPCs. We will, <laughs> we will see how good his, uh, referrals are. Um, Mr. Amble, would you like some? Oh, just Amble is fine, but yes, I love some tacos. Thank you. So he'll make a plate up of one of the different kinds and sort of hand it over to Amble. Um, Thirteen. Okay. Ask your questions, TJ. What, what was I asking? That was an investigate roll, so you can ask two of the questions, I believe. No, 13 is one, because that's not quite perfect. One question from the list and get an accurate answer. What is my gut feeling about what I'm investigating? That, uh... That, uh... you know where to find him. They keep talking about this place where all of these things happened. It's this nexus and, you know, you don't need a three-hour, two-day investigation to tell you you just need to go to that used-to-be power substation. So we don't even have to talk to Sticky Pete. We can just go straight to the spot. Well, what are we waiting for? Are you all going to head there in the very late evening, or are you going to wait till morning? This house has like 30 bedrooms, so. 14. Do I know, uh, storyteller, when my uh, friend is getting home? I know they're visiting parents right now but will they be home tonight or at least a week at least a week okay cool thank you we can am go I supposed there. to open the shop in the morning uh you don't have to Reese I can find somebody to do it for you oh but that, that, that that's my obligation um, you shouldn't have to then I have someone that. who can do your obligation you're needed elsewhere now. Okay. You can just write down your list of duties. And someone I'll qualified out. can handle it. Yeah, he'll pull out a small notepad and just start writing it all down. We can go tonight. Uh... One of my limos can fit all of us comfortably. Well, I'm certainly in no rush to wait for a murderous automatous automaton creature to come for us, so I'd like to get going. <clears throat> Everybody should chime in with their opinion. What time of night is it? 9 or 10 p.m. Oh, yeah. Um, and TJ has a, a well enough idea of what part of the city is this is in, that this is whether or not this would be a reasonably safe place for a limo to show up at it. It's LA, so we'll say we'll get there by 11, 1130. 
Yeah, if we take the 405. And there's no construction. We'll be fine. Yeah. I'll go wherever, wherever you all want to go. Amble? I mean, maybe we had different dreams, but I don't remember the, you know, the transformer thing did what we said, so I don't really know what the problem is with that. Um, it killed a dozen people? No. Two dozen people? Two dozen. Nobody here. It, it, it did. It killed Reese. Selena Reese was the monster. screaming lady that saw the same monster you did and died immediately. Oh, I didn't, I didn't notice. <laughs> Although, the weird thing is, Reese isn't the lady, but was in the dream, and you just know that that's Reese. Mm. Yeah. So it sounds like this dream thing isn't you know, perfect. Clearly not. No. But it's what we have to go on. I mean, you know, um, the sooner we do this, the sooner you um, pay us, I guess. Yeah? I mean, yours and Reese's are the ones that are a little bit more complicated. Everybody else has been compensated to what they desired. Yeah, that's fine. That just means I have to wait in line long less and I mean it sounds like Reese might be you know baited for something different potentially well before we go I'd like to fax these off and Marjorie waves the papers fax uh, you're or you know whatever like Sarah Sarah's a little old so <laughs> So if there's like a newer, hipper way to like upload and send these send these puppies out, Marjorie. visual scanning with your phone. Yeah. Okay. So while they're doing this, while they're having this discussion, Marjorie is like scanning and uploading these to her lawyer. Sounds like nobody is against going to what used to be a power substation. I, I, I had the question about what the neighborhood was like, or that if trade. So you would know the what type of neighborhood it would, this substation is is in, and whether or not a limo showing up at 11.30, 11 o'clock at night would that there's is there a role that I need for that, or is there? It's on the uh, warehouse side of town in an unused, abandoned part of that district. Um. There's one in Hollywood, like Northern Hollywood. So limo not, might not be sus there. Oh no, this is a specific one you have to go to. Uh, cute. What neighborhood is it in? Or just a generic warehouse? It does not exist in actual LA. So generic warehouse, an abandoned part of town. Gotcha. Um, I have to make a stop. I don't know if I have enough guns on me to go to that part of town this part of night with a fancy ass car like that. Uh, we'll be fine. Here's the list, Miss Garnet. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, all right. Um, Garnet, um, hands the list over to Sheila. And she's like, I'm sure you can find someone qualified among us to help out at the library, is it? Yeah, it's a, it's, um, it's a small private library. And what, what, oh, DJ. what the fuck is a private library? Uh, so like, isn't that a isn't a library a place like you go and get books for free? Yeah, but it's 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 not uh, funded by the the public. I don't entirely know. Uh, my friend, my it's friend, probably yeah. funded by private collectors. Um, but TJ, um, Sid can show you 
one of the spare bedrooms that's kind of acts like a storage room. I'm sure you can find something in there if you want to up your personal armory. I personally don't touch the things, but others among us do. I mean, just checks and... I mean, I got enough for me, but if you guys, if any of y'all are going to need guns, I, I'm not. I only got four on me. Um, Marjorie, we have four. Look, it, it, when it comes down to time, it's easier to draw than it is to reload. Yeah, Marjorie wants to go find a pistol in this storage room. Garnet has unlimited resources. You can have any gun you want that's not uh, illegal in the city. All right. Yeah, she just wants the pistol. Marjorie's not a very combative character. Are you sure you don't want an explosive crossbow, Salubri? That is illegal in the city. <laughs> no, it's an inside joke. If you if you know you if you know you know. <laughs> if you know you know. Only if we're only if we're going into a strip club. <laughs> Um, once you have equipment, is there anyone else who does not want to head towards the power substation? And I don't mean you're refusing to go, I mean you're going but don't want to. I wouldn't say that Reese doesn't want to go, but the fact that people are bringing weapons as if they're expecting to have to hurt someone does make Reese feel a little uncomfortable. Can I offer Reese some medication? to like calm his nerves a little bit. Hmm. Oh, um, I, I'm not allowed to put anything into my body. I'm sorry. Or like, well, I have stuff, but it's my own, but it's uh, at home and, and that's doctor provided. What do you take? Insert whatever Tyler had me take last session. <laughs> Some form of a benzo, I think. Yeah. But if, if it's even <laughs> that, cause I assume this was prescribed by a special doctor so who knows if it's even actually what it says on the label um uh garnet texts somebody on her phone <laughs> yeah uh is this uh is this something that marjorie would recognize or something that she that she can provide uh yes all right she reaches into like as, as like like when reese is halfway through the name of the medication Marjorie reaches into her purse and she just pulls out a bottle and takes out a pen and like writes Reese's name on it and says, here. Thank you. Uh, and there's like a pause at a moment and he looks at you and then he looks at Garnet and he looks where Persephone or where Persephone was and then to Sin and then back to Garnet. It, it's okay if I take this, right? You can take whatever you want. It's your body, Reese. Oh, right, yeah. Um, I, yes, yeah. Um, and he'll open the bottle and take one. Okay. Is there anyone who actually <laughs> wants to... Uh, is there anyone who actually does not want to go but does anyways? I think that's a no. I'll take that as a no. Which means we're going to take our mid-show break now. I... And we'll deal with the substation when we return. So don't go anywhere, audience. We'll be back in 10 minutes.
Uh-oh. How are you going to transport yourselves to the power substation? <clears throat> uh, Garnet was gonna um, have us roll up in a oh. Sorry, stream couldn't hear me for a second. Um, TJ seemed to think that was a bad idea due to limousines. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, we can roll up in some other type of vehicles. I mean, I, I, I'm not quite sure what this industry is here, but yeah, maybe clandestine meeting at a, at a, at a warehouse district in the middle of the night. Maybe take something that doesn't have the company logo on it. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's fine. I mean, we also, I have like a fleet of black Escalades. It just would look like we're feds at that point. Actually, yeah, that, that's a pretty good idea. Sure. Um, I think I have some that are unmarked. Pretty sure. Hey, Sid, can you go check that? What is it you want him to check exactly? If I have any unmarked Escalades that don't have the Faust Company logo on them. Oh, yeah. Those are like magnets you can peel off. Cool. Then yeah. We can take two? Sounds good. So it'll be us, Sid, Sin, and maybe like one other person besides the core group. Marjorie will go. Oh yeah. But so an escalate can fit one, two, three, four, five people each. If we if we find something that causes us to have to go into different directions to hmm. make sense, and uh, from you know as you pointed out, making it look like we're feds, more than two is going to probably fall out of that. I ain't never seen them roll up more than two cars. Yeah, no, we'll have just unless they're two. busting someone. Um, sit and sin can drive. Um, and then we'll just go three apiece, including Annalise. I could go in the trunk if it's easier. <laughs> That's not necessary. Have you been in an Escalade? There's plenty of room. Yeah, no, I, I have. Thank I you. usually sit in the, um, we have a well sometimes. People sit in chairs. That, that that's that's normal. <clears throat> you can do that. So, Reese, how about you ride with me? Okay. I'll have Sid drive us. Is there anybody else who would like to join us? Um. Marjorie will drive, uh, we'll ride in the second Escalade. Okay. So Sin will be driving yours. Yeah. I'll stick with TJ. Okay, then I will grab Annalise. So Annalise, Reese, and Garnet will be in one car. Amble, TJ, and Marjorie will be in the second Escalade, driven by Sin. Marjorie, roll willpower, please. That is going to be 15. Thank you. The two Escalades pull up in front of the substation after a 35-minute ride in the car. Uh... It used to be a power substation, but it's not anymore. It's not connected to the grid. It does have power, but it's not got 50 lines connecting it. You can still see all the old giant towers. 
but there's only one line going into the building now as if it just had power like any other structure. Most of the building is dark, but some of it is lit up. Mostly around the offices. And then there's some lighting going around the side. You don't know what, because none of you are electrical workers. There's a handful of cars here. That's all you can see from the closed security gate. The Garnet's car is stopped in front of. On, on the ride over, uh, TJ would have pulled out a little small baggie and a key with a very deep groove and passed it over to Anvil. What, what is it? A key with... A key with a very deep groove and a small baggie of white powder. Oh, okay. I do keep <laughs> it, whatever this stuff is. Oh, all right. And you stick with the right move. <sighs> and he'll offer some uh, Marjorie. Was it you want? You want to hit? You want to bump? You want some of this, Marge? Not now. Thank you. And she takes a hit from her inhaler instead. <clears throat> I love it. TJ will take his own bump and then put it back in his pocket. It is Coke. It's not very good Coke. It's Coke. <laughs> not very good. It's the job done, Coke. Miss Garnet? Yes. When we talked, you said no one would get hurt for me. That was one of the things we, we talked about. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Mr. TJ mm -hmm. and Miss Marjorie got guns. Well, to be fair, TJ already came with guns. That's like uh, right. his whole thing. He's a bodyguard, a hitman, whatever he's hired to do. Um, And if you remember in the dream, I think Marjorie already had a gun. Or got access to a gun very quickly. What is your point, Reese? I just, I, I just don't want people to die because of me. For me. I love your very self-centered view of things, Reese. But um, what's about to happen has nothing to do with you. <clears throat> oh, um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really sorry. I shouldn't. You're, you're right. I shouldn't. I'm sorry. I made you a promise that in terms of your quote unquote owner, I would not hurt him or kill him. And I don't plan to break that promise. Anything outside of that, everyone is allowed to protect themselves how they see fit. And I will protect you how I see fit outside of your. What was his name? That's... What was his name? Who? Which one? Reese's owner. Travis? Yeah. Travis? Um, outside of Travis, um, since you don't seem fond of weapons of any kind, I will protect you how I see fit. Okay. Thank you. I'm, I'm really sorry. Why are you sorry? Um, I I I was thinking of me in a, in a way I shouldn't have done. That was in inconvenient and unfair to you. I don't think it's inconvenient or unfair. I just believe that you have been conditioned to think certain things revolve around you when they don't. I think Travis has put you up on a pedestal that has created an inflated view of the world for you. But us going to the substation has nothing to do with you at this point in time. We're going here for Queen Persephone to find the top and that top will eventually lead to you, but I'm doing this first and foremost for her. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's that, that's better. That's uh, yeah, that's better. What happens after with the top? 
will be on your terms. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. The lap wasn't at you, sorry. I did not realize I was unmuted. Anyways, yes, you're still sitting in front of the closed gate. So um, Marjorie, who was probably riding shotgun um, in our Escalade, she'll turn, she, she turns around to TJ and Amble and says, TJ, darling, <sighs> these are your associates. Something like that. Would you like to be the one to take point on how to approach them? Because they may be the least suspicious to see you than of all of us. All right. And he'll just get out of the car and start walking up to the gate. Is the gate locked? Yes. It's... uh electric so like it doesn't have like a lock you push and swing open is there a intercom there is but there's no power to it you can see the box is disconnected it's probably fob operated is there anybody watching the gate You don't see anyone except you and, you know, the car in front of you. He's going to just kind of... Uh, we're talking, like, standard gate, like... Mm -hmm. Or it's, like, security gate so that it can't be easily climbed. You could climb it. Ten feet. Um, could I have said we have the forethought to bring bolt cutters? <laughs> so, you could, but there's no bolt because it's not that kind of lock. It, like, slides in and bag locks. Oh. Damn. You don't <laughs> think it's electrified, TJ, but it's probably got motion sensors. If you care. Um, I imagine motion sensors it, with how close he's getting to the gate would already have picked him up. Not necessarily, because, you know, squirrels. It's probably if you touch it, and it probably requires a certain amount of mass. Could I uh, observe the uh, gate? Wait, not mass. Or see through the illusion at the gate to see if there's anything funky with it? Uh, yeah, you can roll it. Okay. Yellow. Uh, can any of my uh, shenanigans from the roll earlier be applicable in fixing this situation? No. Okay. Um, I rolled a 24. Success. Okay, go ahead and ask the questions you're allowed to ask. I did see through the illusion. I think. Oh, I thought you said observe situation. I uh, asked for both, and you responded to the last one, so that's what I thought you meant. You can use the role for uh, observe a situation because there is no illusion on the gate. The gate is okay. mundane. Um, then that would be... I still rolled fairly high, so that would be just a, a 20 and not a 24 for success. Um, so let me get that cheat sheet. Um, observe. Um, so that was a success, so I get to ask two questions. Um, what is the best way through this? 
And the second one? Would be... Uh, what should I be on the lookout for? It's not a power substation anymore, but there's people here, and they're not government vehicles because they're not government license plates, which no one noticed until you take a closer look. So did a private organization buy it? Are they squatters? This is not the city. That's what you should be on the lookout for. Uh, best way through the situation is going to be to shut down the gate. Can I... Um, I poke my head out to TJ. Um, the There's some people here, and it's definitely not the city. So we just need to figure out how to deactivate these gates. Can I observe the situation to see if I can find a, a reasonable source of... That would be investigation. That is a 13. Ask your way. Ask away. Is there anything weird about what I'm investigating? The gate itself? No. Would my career as a criminal logically know how to shut down one of these types of gates then? Yes. I will do that. Okay. Once I am uh, once I've done the thing I will go to open the gate. So, TJ disappears along the fence line. Some rustling in the bushes. A snap of electricity. TJ goes, fuck, ow. And then the noticeable sound of power winding down, and the gate just kind of pops open. Starts swinging loose as the magnetic lock releases. Cool. We shall push through the gate then. Yeah, mm -hmm. using using her foot, Marjorie will nudge the gate open. So you're out of the car. Yeah. Okay. It swings. No, no ominous creak. Well maintained. Okay. Uh, uh, she'll let TJ go first. Oh, I was gonna roll in our cars. <laughs> Where are um, the other vehicles parked in the complex? It is a fair, like, if you walked, it'd be a hot second to get there. The gate's at the edge of the property. Okay. I'm going to roll us in. Fifth of the mile. <clears throat> I'm going to have Sid and Sin roll our cars in, like, as quietly as possible. But I also want them to, like, turn them around so they're all facing out so we can get away as quickly as possible if shit goes south. Okay. Like, a fair distance, like, cut it in half with the cars. And then and then Garnet will get out and walk with Marjorie and TJ. Okay. Uh, Reese will trail just a, a hand, like a right hand back behind Garnet. <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm sitting in the car, you know, until somebody gets me, I guess. <laughs> if I notice Amble's not going, <laughs> then I'll poke my head in the back seat. Are you gonna come? Oh, uh, it's time. Oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. I like you know wipe off my uh, nose on my sleeve and, and stumble out of the car. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh dear. Time. Do this. Um, she pokes her head into the SUV where where Sid is, gives him a peck on the cheek, and then goes to trail behind TJ, who I'm assuming is leading. <clears throat> I will observe a situation as I'm rolling up. 
Okay, roll it. Eleven. That's a success what? with complication. Uh, ask one question. Huh? What currently poses the biggest threat? Um, give me more context. As we narrow, are... narrow it down to something. <clears throat> Doesn't be super narrow, just more narrow than everything around me. <laughs> All right. Um, so we're going, walking to the building, we're passing the cars. Do any of the cars stick out as um, this? being a big boss that there's a big boss man or are these or based on the cars that we're walking by are they are we talking like i'll give you this beat? you find you don't find anything obvious about the outsides of the cars of the building itself but you do see a flyer laying on the front seat of one of the cars a pile of flyers in fact not like they pick them up like they're the ones who give them out. The Transcendent Order of Pale Starlight. Any of y'all know what, that, what this bullshit is? None of you have Trans ever heard of it. You don't need to roll. Okay. Must be a gang. Um, Tyler? That pamphlet is definitely a cult pamphlet, TJ. Um... Uh, if this was a gang, I, I would know that, uh, who who we were dealing with and how to oh, there must yes, be Marcher. a new cult in town interesting is the window open on the car no Damn it. she's not tinted yes marjorie um can you remind me what lady persephone said to marjorie in the dream on the phone again something about the death wizard and someone else is our friend and beware the you can trust the death magician, the violent one, the one who does not know their own strength, but you cannot trust. Okay. All right. Just wanted to... Go ahead and roll... Uh... Ooh, what do I want that to be? Hold on. Read the person. Read a person. All right. This is one thing that Marjorie fucks with. <laughs> ah ha ha ha. Read a person. 15. Okay. The Garnet, TJ, and Reese are the trusty ones. It doesn't necessarily mean Amble and Annalise are untrustworthy. It could be someone else outside this crew. There's also Sid and sin and who knows how many other people you're going to run into but you just have a gut feeling those three are the three listed all right you said it was garnet reese and tj the TJ. violent one tj the death magician garnet the one who doesn't know their own power reese okay um, thank you garnet takes a, a picture of the pamphlet so she can research it later okay i'm gonna take one <laughs> you grab the car door don't oh. Nope. Oh, sorry. I thought that they were like on like, the. It's on the, the front car. seat in a car. No. Yeah, no sight. Oh, all right. Um, you reach for the car handle and see the little blinky red light, and are like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> Actually. Don't do it. <laughs> oh, he's gonna do it. Oh, he's gonna do it. <laughs> I mean, look, look, look. We walk in on them. And they get all upset that they, we, we walked in on them. Or we bring them out here. Huh? Huh? Uh, I think we'll be fine. We don't we'll even get one know on the way where out. they are in the building. We'll get you one on the way out, Rogers. Okay. I think I think I'll find a way to be all right until then. Um, yeah. Uh, 
So moving forward. From the inside of the building, there's when we get to the door, is there immediate area that is lit up? What do you mean? The outside where the doors are? Well, I mean, so can we see into the building at all from once at all? No. Uh, the only windows that exist are, you remember those old telephone stations that used to exist where they've got like little tiny windows with bars on them? Mm -hmm. Or darkened glass on your side? That's all there is. This is a hardened building because it was a power substation once. Yes, Garnet. Um, do I see any cameras? Yes. Can I perform a ritual? Yes, what are you trying to do? I would like to corrode all the wires to cut connection. Okay. Garnet is aware they would notice that. Because all the cameras would go dead. Uh... Can I think of a better way? Can I just... make the lenses foggy? With... decay? Uh... Are the lenses, are the cameras, like... It would be glass. Are they posted up on a, like, on a pole, or are they attached to the side of the building? They're the kind that are above doorways and big windows, attached to the wall, looking down. You could decay the, what do you call it? hinges to make them slowly slump down. That might not be as noticeable to people who look at the same thing every day. Okay. Then I will do that. Roll it. That would be a save roll, I think. <laughs> Before a ritual. plus save. And I get a plus one from Persephone. I got a success. Um, so the ritual affects the last for as long as you actually uphold them and the ritual does not become unstable are the two effects I am choosing to enact with the success. Okay. As far as the lights, TJ, there are lights over every doorway like you would expect in a government building. Or municipal in this case. Um, unless Garnet lets TJ know that She's you can see the cameras shit. like fall down and swing away. And also, uh, it I... is obvious when Garnet performs a ritual. It is not uh, like a quick thing. I, yeah, I, I was just gonna say like, TJ could probably pick up a brick and throw it to break the light before the ritual would happen. Yeah, but they'd notice that too. No, no, it's light going out. Wouldn't necessarily. No, why? The sound. Cameras don't have sound. Yes, the sound but they the have light. ears. We get a sound of the light bulb shattering. <laughs> we don't know where in the building they are. I can disable the cameras. Okay. Puts on the brick. Here's what I want to know. Which entrance are you approaching? I'm going to assume the ritual takes place back in the parking lot, but once it's done, front door, side door, where are you trying to go? I vote side door. Okay. This is an old, an old substation, multiple floors, right? Down, not up. Okay. So yeah, and then I guess if there's no fire escape, side door works. Yeah. Side door is fine. Okay. You duck around the side of the building. Then what? Um. I guess I'd like to investigate to see if there's any kinds of like um, 
like trip wires or booby traps or extra security guard dogs, guard hose uh, around the side door area or to like listen to see if there's um, like any kind of like commotion or activity inside from where we come from where we're going to get it close to. I'm investigating. Roll it. Rolling. I rolled that, that, all right. I rolled a 12. Okay. I investigate one thing. Um, is there anything weird about what I'm investigating? The door? Yeah, or activity around the door, if there's people or anything like that. You feel like you missed something at the front. Okay. Your peripheral vision picked it up and it was weird, but you didn't stop to look because you had, you had a mission to go around the side. Okay. This door, no, nothing weird. Okay. So it should be safe to go through this door. It shouldn't try to electrocute us or throw void magic at us. Those substations, they have regular doors or no big metal security doors that would be uncommon for how old is the substation the substation is this uncommon no they've been using those since at least the 70s it's just a metal door it's been upgraded to key card entry probably in the 80s Well, if there's no objection, um, I'd like to open the door. You grab it and pull it. It's locked because, you know, it should be. All right. Nothing weird happens, though. It's just yes, eh, you need a key card or something to bypass the lock. Okay. There is a key card reader, and it's also got the code button for, you know, when the reader breaks. Okay. Code so buttons. Good. Yeah, so she gives like one tug and the door doesn't give and she looks back to the uh to the nerds at large. Which y'all got a compact. Garnet pulls out something from her back pocket. Takes it out, takes the the, the foundation brush thing. It kind of wipes it over the keypad, the number pad. Uh-huh. To see which buttons remain have powder on them from fingerprints? Five of them. Very snazzy. Two, three, six, seven, nine. Would an act under pressure roll be appropriate here? <laughs> what are you trying to accomplish? Uh, I'm trying to, I mean, it. These are the numbers that are people aren't using the keypad who don't know the code. So I'm trying to uh, put in the right code. So you want to try to narrow it down and hope you guessed which of those uh, combinations is going to be your best guess on the first try? Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could relax under pressure. That is a 16. The first combination does not work. But she set no sensors or alarms off. You do realize, though, with a 16 on the roll, the number of iterations is a little ridiculous with five numbers. Five to the power of five possible combinations. Quite a few. And we got Without any, any more ideas. context, if you had some context, you might be doable. Um, what was the name of that that was on the flyer? Yes, they did. They did. Did they have a meetup date? <laughs> Transcendent Order of Pale Starlight. Garnet took a picture. 
Do you ask? Okay. Do they have a, I guess, can we investigate the, uh, the hoopity boo? Uh, the transcendent order of pale starlight is. Can you look at the picture, Garnet? Yeah. Don't hate me. Garnet pulls out the, the phone to look, the phone to pull up the picture, blows it up to look for numbers. And there is a date for their next meeting, an open house tonight that's the weird thing you remember seeing out of your peripheral vision marked right at the front doors just open one and all welcome wow um so still try going in the side though well marjorie like when like when we look at that she goes why don't we just try walking in and pretend to be you know interested Can I just try one thing? Can I try mm -hmm. the combination that would that would be the like the pale order of whatchamacallit this in an order of the pale starlight is is five. Five mm -hmm. words. So can I try the coordinating numbers associated with the first letter of each word? Sure. Roll act under pressure. No. <laughs> uh, wait, it, it is does Garnet say that? Nope. 13. 13. Successful. Get it wrong on the first try, which means that's two incorrect entries. But then it occurs to you to do count the number of letters in each word, but start over every time you hit zero. Like if you go over 10. Uh huh. Put that code in, and it works. Oh. Aha! But is anyone gonna go around the front and just walk in and like act like a bunch of starry-eyed hippie noobs, for lack of a better word? I know Amber wants to give it a shot. I'm not the, the social type. We could totally just split the party. What could go wrong? Marjorie, Reese, and Amble can go in the front, and yeah. me and Elise and TJ can go on the side door. And that, that works to give a distraction because y'all will be occupying their attention. Yeah, I, I don't think I, that would work out. Why not? Um, Because I don't know what to bullshit them with. You I'll, I'll don't have whatever. to bullshit them. Just say I found a pamphlet. Ask them if they have drugs. Pamphlet? Yes. The pamphlet. What? Okay, like Show's pamphlet. phone. <laughs> the pamphlet. What talking about. <clears throat> Just say right, if you're interested in Starlight. I'm sure they'll lead the way. Okay. Uh, great. I, I head towards the front. Marjorie Reese, okay. this is going to be the least violent way if you go with Amble okay. and Marjorie. Yeah, I'll go I'll go with them. And I think you all noticed sort of since you said you're going in to see people, there's you're like spread sort of the hair. Oh god, it's so Karen. Uh, <laughs> out of when it's not in front of my face. Uh, so Karen. Out of his eyes. And his eyes are wide and young and big and they are beautiful see perfect you'll fit right in with all of the starry-eyed hopefuls let's get you in there reese just asking questions mm -hmm. i don't care what you ask them probably mm -hmm. about stuff that it makes that they seem interested in so they talk about themselves all right auto thoughts put out <laughs> you did not we're on our way, okay? Oh I've got God. I've got the two dolls, two dolls in the career is to walk into a cult open house. And what could go Truly. wrong? A doll a vessel and a careerist. What could go wrong? It'll really be perfect. It'll be so great. <gasps> All right. Okay. People going around the front. You turn the hey, corner. Tyler, should I... Hmm? 
No, you, you finish first. Go first. Uh, you turn the corner and walk up to the front door, which is closed, but there is a sign on it, a banner hanging over the top that says, Open house to all seekers of true knowledge. Those who would brave gazing into the abyss. You head inside. Uh, it's a big open area that has been emptied out and all the stuff shoved to the sides. And a bunch of uh, fold-out metal chairs set up. With cushions tossed on them. There's a coffee, there's a Keurig machine and a tray full of donuts, stale donuts and cookies. And then there's like a desk set up in the front with two large dudes flanking the left and right of it and the uh, blonde-haired lady. The hair is very long and immaculate like Garnet's. Uh, really, really pale, almost ashen skin. So, uh, Steel-colored eyes, gray. Uh, Well-honed features. Handing clipboards out to people who are just wandering in or wandering around. How many other people are here? Uh, quick head count of this room, 16, 17. Okay. But there's other areas curtained off behind it. Okay. Um... Marjorie will uh, walk up to the table and say, I'm here to peer into the abyss and seek the truth. Ah, yes. Welcome, Seekers. If you would fill this out and hand it and turn it in, and we'll, we'll get you in there in time for the lecture. Please hurry. Don't dawdle. Hands each of you a clipboard with like three pieces of paper on it and a pen attached. Oh, you describe that woman a lot. Would you say she counts as a semi-important NPC? No. Okay. Okay. All right. Um. So what's uh? So Marjorie will start. You know, she'll read over the paper, but. What's your age? How tall are you? What's your favorite meal? What's your worst memory? What does oblivion mean to you? What does the end of everything and return to emptiness make you feel like? Who would you kill to get everything you ever wanted? Damn. What does yeah, the color of blood way. smell like? Yeah. They get weirder from there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like 22. I'd kill Jimmy Kimmel. You know, just go through that. You know? <laughs> I love cheese omelets. <laughs> what does the color of blood smell like, uh, Amble? Wood shavings. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, Marjorie is like she she gives like a fake name, but like she kind of like goes through the list. And as they get more and more, she wouldn't describe them. She wouldn't perceive them as weird. She'd perceive them as absurd. So okay. she would just start giving absurd answers as well. What's Reese? Uh so Reese Reese would fill it out honestly. Uh, Reese, there is no last name as far as he's aware of. Uh, he's 19, you know, he's... What about uh, the weird questions? Um, she just answers them. You know, no, he wouldn't harm anyone. Uh, you know, uh, the world is already a void. Okay. Takes Reese the longest. Marjorie, you collect all of the clipboards, unless you're all going to go back and return them. It's up to you. Yeah. Interestingly oh. to Amble and Reese, this woman just glances at you and her eyes slide over you completely disinterested, which is a strange experience for both of you. No effect. Go ahead, Marjorie. I'll say, um, she'll wait to take all of their stuff, to take all the clipboards back. Thank you, Miss Marjorie. Please, it's, please, it's Miss Eyre. Miss Eyre, sorry. You're forgiven. Flips through Marjorie's. Hmm. Looks you up and down. Head inside. Okay. And calls you by your childhood nickname that you only ever told your, your only your best friend ever called you. Who you haven't seen in years. Okay. Um, you can make up what that is. Um, Chicken hawk. <laughs> Shit pickle. Shit pickle. Sold. Yeah. Yeah, she's kind of, I beg your pardon? 
She's already turned her attention to Amble and dismissed you. Looks over his answers. I mean, you can press her if you want, but... No, she just kind of, like, accepts that this is part of the absurd bullshit. Looks through his answers, nods, smiles. Right this way. Your destiny awaits. Dead in the eyes for a briefest second. Sam will just wander in, or does he react to that? No, no, I, I go in, you know, as far as I'm concerned, these are con, these are like, you know, con men, so, you know, they're, they're trying to grift me. Reese, flips through yours, nods, looks at you, lingers for a second, right at your throat, out of your eyes. Mm. Head on through. Thank you. You hear whispers from a few of the people around you, Reese. Chosen the vessel bring her of the void do you look around or you just ignore the voices just, just ignore the voices what about Amble and Marjorie are you looking around when you hear weird whispers you don't catch the words um she kind of like her eyes scan the room but she's not gonna actually like she's not doing head turning but she will like reach her hand out and kind of like protectively put a sh arm around Reese's shoulders, like on like the small, like on like between his shoulder blades and be like, let's get you inside. What about Amble? Um, no, I mean, this is giving me, you know, familiar vibe. So I'm expecting to like, you know, walk into a room that's going to get very bloody very soon. So I'm kind of like, <laughs> Oh boy, here I go killing yeah, again. Um, well, I don't kill anybody. Just, you know, <laughs> bad stuff happens. So Marjorie, you're the only one paying any attention. Everyone, except the three of you, because this was a lively room, small conversations, random bystanders, civilians, the staff. Everyone has stopped to turn and stare at Reese as you pass through. Okay. Yeah, I'll put, I'll put Reese, I'll make Reese the monkey in the middle. Okay. Between uh, Amble and I. As soon as you pass through the curtain, the noise immediately resumes in the room behind you. The room ahead of you never stopped. This room is set up like a makeshift revival tent, for lack of a better word, even though it's inside a power station. Except the podium isn't a preacher podium. It's just a business podium up on the stage. Um... Can I assume that we made like exchanged phone numbers before all of this? Sure, I'm real good with that. Okay. Um, I'm gonna send Garnet a text. Uh, it's not really a text, but it's gonna be like a GIF. And it's the GIF of like that monkey, like that plush monkey puppet with like the weird side eye. Like here, I'll um... No. Yeah, the weird that 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 that's all that's all um that's what Marjorie sends Garnet. Yeah, so that's all. Just so you know, just so that you know, Garnet knows that there's something fucky going on. Whether whether Garnet gets the message or not, you know, we'll find out. Uh, the room goes silent when a guy uh, walks up to the podium. Well-dressed man in a business suit. Not a $50,000 business suit like Garnet's people, but still a nice suit. More like what Marjorie would wear, probably. Still gotta have money for this kind of suit. Uh, colors match nicely it's tailored he's middle-aged salt and pepper beard closely trimmed hair is still fully colored though curly attractive dude medium build walks up to the podium welcomes everyone most of the people here seem to recognize him like they've been here before enthusiastic welcomes he calls out the newcomers and thanks you for coming locks eyes with the three of you lingers on reese doesn't say anything and begins, begins giving a lecture 
about uh this is this is gonna amuse Garnet. Because I told you I already planned this before you found that thing. Uh a lecture about Oblivion. It says stuff like the world, when you look at it, just can't be random. I mean, it's so different than the vast emptiness that is everything else. And even all the other planets we've seen, at least in our solar system, none of them even remotely resemble the precious life-giving nature of our own planet. But you have to understand, our greatest pretenses are built up not to hide the evil and the ugly in the world and in ourselves, but the emptiness. Because the hardest thing to hide is something that's not there. Because the whole world isn't there. You and I aren't there. That's the truth. We're all just empty. We're all just nothing. And that's how this entire lecture goes, and these people are eating it up. And the bottom line seems to be embrace the emptiness inside of you so that we can become one, one word, world full of empty people. Okay. While that lecture is happening, darn it, Tracy, you slip in the side door. It's a service access. Roll 2d10 for me. TJ, do the same thing. No, you can tell me the result. Oh, yeah. I'm not telling you what the modifier is or what you're actually rolling. Fourteen. Mm-hmm. 14 and 11, okay. Okay. You both perceive that something's wrong. There is a supernatural influence here, but you can't pick up on it. You can't locate the source. It's below you, though, Garnet. You know that much. TJ, you got nothing. You just know you can sense it. it's wrong. Like that one time that dark secret thing happened to you. And like that nightmare you just had. Uh, the hallway is very, very long and seems to stretch forever, though, which is weird, and you know that's not right. So I know it's below us. The source of that feeling, that power, yes. He's that... going to pull out a gun and then get start to uh, attach the, his silencer to the gun. Um, is the is that power what I would associate with the top, the spinning top? Yes. Okay. We have to go down. It's there. All right, I imagine there's a better way to get there than ripping through the floor. So, <laughs> which, any idea which direction? I don't think any more than you. He's going to head off down the long hallway, heading to, away from the front of the building to what he assumes is the back of the building. Garnet's following? Yes. You pass door after door after door. Do you stop at any of them? There are so many of them. I am focused on the singular task. Um, these appear to be offices, probably. No windows. No windows. Also, but why like... would a power substation have a bunch of offices in the service access? It's weird. Those should all be up front. No, no. I mean... I, he's never been in a power substation that's been closed for probably decades um, with some irrelevant source of power. 
He doesn't know what it's like in there. Um, he, I imagine, he would be looking for a stair key, a stairwell, or an elevator. You can check all those doors, or just keep heading to the end. Just keep heading towards where, because you know buildings have stairwells and elevators on like the sides or in the corners. They're not stairwells are usually in the corners. They're not going to be in the middle of the building. Okay, you walk for hours. At least that's what it feels like. Until you finally get to the end of the never-ending hallway, which is just an inky pool of blackness ahead of you. And I don't mean it like gets gradually darker into the corner. I mean it's like well lit, well lit, well lit darkness, almost like a curtain of it. Cell phone flashlight does not seem to penetrate it. Um, Garnet will kind of move TJ behind her. Well, she steps towards the inky darkness, and I want to see through the illusion. Okay, roll it. 19 success. The darkness is coming from somewhere that is not from Elysium. So it's bleeding through. Mm Mm-hmm. From down, but like down not like downstairs like (laughs) down yeah I get it a place that I would go you know can I cut it off can I seal up the leak yeah but you'd have to be at the source can't do it from here so this is a dead end is there anything in the hallway you feel like there's a staircase there is there anything in the hallway do i think that this is the way down to the source one way you don't know that it's the only way is there anything in the hallway at all Mm, what do you mean um I mean, like, is the hallway completely clean, or is there plants or chairs or... I think he wants to chuck something into the darkness. It's a service hallway, but I mean, you could grab something random and toss it in there. You'll grab something random and toss it in there. It makes the sound you would expect for something to hit a tile floor, and then the clank as it hits metal stairs, and then clanking as it rolls down a few and stops. The stairs are there. All right. It walks through. <laughs> TJ disappears into primordial blackness. Nice. Uh, before he completely disappears, Garnet hooks her fingers, her one one of her fingers, and like the belt loop on the back of his pants, and follows behind him. That's when you get the text right before you entered the blackness. Oh. <laughs> It'll be fine. Okay, you get to you get the gif of the yep. side eye toy, and you head into the inky blackness. Huh. Hope they'll be all fine. Uh oh. <laughs> and that's where we pause this session. Until next week. Woo-hoo. I see. <laughs> We're in danger. <laughs> Just thinking that <laughs> you might be in danger. We're, we just had a like a, a ink shower, but we're fine. Wow, ink shower. As the horrid visions of reality fade, and the comforting and safe light descends upon us once again, we hope you return to experience the next chapter of our tale of horror next week. But until then, there are many other fine performances the Razides of horrible tales can exquisitely torture you with. On Mondays, we have The Curse of Strahd Reimagined at 7 p.m., followed by Delta Green Watcher at 11. On Tuesdays, we have Dark Sun, Road to Uruk at 8 p.m. On Wednesday, we have uh, a short special G.I. Joe campaign, or I won't call it a campaign, story happening at 8 p.m. And on Thursday at 9 p.m., we have Red Dragon Slaying Madness, I think is what's happening. Yes. Yes. 
on Friday, both of these things while the normal fearless GM is on vacation, touring the world in his Disney cruise. On Fridays at 7 p.m., Masks of Gnarly Thotep, followed by They Came from Camp Murder Lake, Summer's Been Axed at 11. On Saturday at 7 p.m., Reign of Winter and Pathfinder 2E, of course, followed again by This Game at 11. And on Sunday, Mage the Ascension, Fast Station Regenerated at 9 p.m. Come check them all out. You can find me next, running Mage of the Ascension tomorrow. Cast crew, seekers, damned souls. Tell everyone where you can be found next in our show and the other cool things you do outside of Warpleton. Why, hello there. I am Savannah, also known as at Miss Miss Me, Wolf Fox. Uh, Lupine Vendetta would also call me Raptor Princess, because that was my nickname in the first cult story that we had. It's fine. Um, you can find me tomorrow, Sunday, for Mage the Ascension, where I play my character, Roxy. Hello! I was Marjorie Air tonight, and when I'm not being Marjorie Air, uh, I am Salubri. You may find me on Twitch and various uh, social media platforms as Salubri MD, doesn't stand for medical doctor. Uh, and you will find me here on Wednesday for the G.I. Joe uh, mini adventure. And then you'll find me back here uh, playing Marjorie Air some more for Colt. And then you can find me in the not too distant future on the Warple Tail Patreon, where I'll be running a Dungeons and Dragons homebrew game. Yeah. Hello, my name is uh, Caldun Khalil. You can find me on Twitter and other social media at K Khalil. Uh, I write for role playing games like Vampire the Masquerade and Dune. Hunter 5th edition and such. You can find my work uh, on the Storyteller's Vault, uh, and you can find me uh, playing games here. Right now I'm in the uh, Cult game uh, on Saturdays, and hopefully soon I'll be in a Mage the Awakening game um, once that's finalized. I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, see you all soon. I am Zachary Nalgret, he, him. I can be found on the internet at Zach rules.com i had various other social media places such as the hell site as at zach rules or at zach rules dice because zach ruiz got to tiktok before i did uh you can next find me on monday night 10 30 p.m on D, D beyond uh as part of the jazz first game day you can also find me there thursday night at 10 30 p.m and uh then you'll find me back here because the bar the vampire game is doing something without our characters this week oh hi it's me critical k uh you can find me on the bird app which zach has now removed from his language but put into mine at critical k k a e with two k's you can catch me on Monday nights as we are wrapping up Parsling's Adagio at 7 p.m. on Guild of the Phoenix. And then at 11 p.m. on Monday night, you can catch me here for that dope Delta Green Game Watchers. Uh, as Zach mentioned, on Wednesday, while he and I will not be featured, we are having a special Primogen meeting on the Bard's Playhouse, which I highly encourage you to check out because our Primogen are absolutely wild. And there's a lot of them and they're delightful. Then you can also catch me on Wednesday night at D&D Beyond, where I will be in a d, &D game with uh, the critical bard, Jason Carl and Jen Krenchmer, rolled by Kyle Vought. I apologize if I butchered those names. It's a thing. Uh, and then on Saturday, I will be back here for this game. And then uh, whatever games Zach also mentioned on d, d Beyond, I'm in a bunch of those also in the coming week. Shenanigan times for the Aussie Takeover. They are all in honor of Jasper's Game Day, a fantastic charity. I recommend everyone look into for mental health awareness in games. I was saving talking about the, the Aussie ones for next week. Oh, sorry. Stole your thunder. Sorry. And on that note, we'll leave you all to your delicious nightmares. Until next week, good night.